there was a lot of things that happened which was um, highly unpleasant. You know, girls were raped. It was just a ruckus. It was uh, it was a mad time in Malaya. We talk so much about these days, you know, in the 21st century, about women empowerment. And she was a super strong woman. The only female to ever receive an award by the British government. You do know that she's my grand aunt, right? One of the best experiences of my life. It's, it's, a, it's a very funny story how it all started really because um, I was on the way to a film festival in Sabah and there was a producer friend of mine who said, um, oh, you know, we're, we're casting for this role. Um, to, uh, we need a Eurasian girl to play the role, the Eurasian lady. Um, and have you ever heard of Sebu Kathigezu? Because you have very similar jaw lines. And I just looked at her and I'm like, you do know that she's my grand aunt, right? Growing up, you know, um, just knowing of the great work that she had done. Um, and then to, to, to have someone ask me to play that role, was, it was pretty amazing. Just to know, you know, what Sibyl was like, you know, who, who was she and the way she spoke, the way she talked. Her daughter Olga was still alive at that time and um, I would go to Ipoh a few times and I would sit down with Olga uh, and I would say, you know, what was her voice like, what were her mannerisms like. <laughs> Most of it I used um, instincts and you know of course with the help of the director Bernard Charlie you know we, we created this we couldn't it couldn't be a perfect Sybil but you know a Sybil that was pieced together by little bits of information that I got. There was a lot of pride um, doing that you know I mean I still get the chills every time I think of it. We shot for about three months we were in Ipoh um, we shot in the exact same location where you know she was hiding with her family in this town called Papan in Para, um, and it was just you know it it was it was like as if you know in some surreal way like she was there overseeing the whole thing to undergo whatever she went through, you know, her trauma, her torture, you know, learning how to be so so strong amidst what was going on at that time. I mean, you know, this was during World War II and she was, she was a super strong woman you know, to, to fight the, the, the Japanese and, you know, to stand for her beliefs and to still take care of her family at the same time. There's so much history there, so much um, amazing history that our youth, you know, would, would love to hear about. I mean, she did something really great for our country. She stood up for our country. She's the only female to ever receive an award by the British government, um, you know, uh, for bravery. And I think that's an amazing feat we have to remember because if not for them, we won't be where we are today. People like Sybil, um, you know, we talk, we talk so much about these days, you know, in the 21st century about women empowerment and, and being strong and being resilient and, you know, women needs to be, uh, to be heard and everything, you know, and we forget that there are these role models that we can look up to. You know, we have so many in our country who are forgotten um, and they shouldn't be.